All right, let's talk a little bit about domes. So I've loved domes since I was a kid. And I studied up on it, learned all the geometry and the measurements and the angles and all that stuff, Buckmeister Fuller's information, all that stuff. So Buckmeister Fuller's domes are geodesic domes. And each one of these lines uh, can be called a strut or a segment or an edge. So each one of these edges in geodesic domes, there are different sizes to them. And I'm going to get into this a little bit more in a second, but depending on the type of dome, you can have two, three, even more different sizes to deal with. So putting it together, you have to take all that into account and it's a bit of a hassle. I don't want to get into the complication of explaining how you go from a platonic solid to a dome, but um, from there's the platonic solids which uh, were discovered by Plato, but then there's also the Archimedean solids that were popularized, maybe discovered uh, by Archimedes. And Archimedean solids have equal sized edges and they can be built with different shapes like uh, on geodesic domes are always triangles. Here you can have squares and triangles, or hexagons and pentagons, or pentagons, or octagons and squares, or hexagons and squares, all that stuff. So one of his solids is the cuboctahedron from cube, because it's, it's a cube where you cut the edges off, some triangles off, or some pyramid-looking sides off, and you end up with this which has the same thing on the bottom turned a little bit. So that's the cuboctahedron. And I was thinking, well, the good thing about it is that if you make this out of tubing, which is the way that a lot of people make these, you end up with all the sides for each shape is the same length, which is great because, for example, let's say I want to make this dome type of structure and I want to make it with tubes um, if you use electric conduit which is the metal tubing that they use to put wires through when you build a house they come in in 10 foot lengths is the, is the longest so you cut that in half and you got five feet lengths on each side and you can see the sketches I've made uh, here Imagine that each one of those lines is five feet. And you can see the, the guy standing next to it. Um, now, what I did was, and this is what I came up with, is I made this bottom part, which is kind of, it's actually a prism because it has a hexagon on each side. This part here is also a hexagon. And they're turned just a little bit. And then all of these segments, all of them, all of these edges, or if you were using tubing, these would be um, struts. All these struts are the same size. So imagine these are five feet, five feet, five feet, five feet, five feet. So you end up with a dome looking structure. Now, the cool thing is that you don't have to mess with anything. You could cut and drill all your segments, all your tubing to five foot, throw them in a pickup, let's go. You get there, you don't have to sort anything with colors or by size or angles or nothing because everything is the exact same size. So this is why I like this shape. You don't have to deal with different size tubing. Now, the next step up would be 
this one, which instead of having a hexagon as its base, it has an octagon, which is eight sides. So the same thing, a prism down here with two octagons, and then you have five squares and four triangles, and they fit beautifully. Now, it goes to show, and I'm sure if you know anything about this, you're screaming at me that they're not as strong as a buckyball or a, or, a, or a geodesic dome, which has only triangles. This is true. Now, depending on the loads you need to put on this, you can leave it like that, or you could have a diagonal or even a cross here. A diagonal should be good enough. A diagonal on each one of these. Same as here, you could have a diagonal on each one, like that. And the easy thing is that there's a real simple formula for getting this length. And it comes out to seven feet long by five on the edges. So each diagonal is gonna be seven feet. The only problem with that is that you would lose um, three feet of your 10 feet of your 10 foot tubing. So you'd have to discard those three feet for each diagonal that you make. So you will lose some tubing when you, if, if you make the diagonals here. You may not have to depending on the, on the thickness of your tubing and or materials that you're using, if you're using wood or whatever. Now, I really like these two shapes and for the purposes of uh, real cheap housing, and ease of build, this would be a really simple and easy way to make a dome. Or also for people that go to uh, Burning Man. People that go to Burning Man, they don't have to deal with separating all the tubing and all that crap. And the other real cool thing about this is that when you have three different sized edges on your triangles for the other types of domes, the covering, if you wanted to make a covering of the actual shapes instead of just like a huge blanket on top of it or tarp, which is all wrinkly and whatever, if you could make this out of fabric really easy because again, all your triangles are gonna be the same exact size and all your squares are gonna be the exact same size. So when you get the to the point where you need to sew this thing, the cover, or if you got tubing and you want to use like either plastic or wood paneling, same thing. It's each of these sizes is the exact same size. You don't have like a longer size here, two shorter ones like uh, with other domes. So that would make it very easy as well to cover. Covering, when you start researching geodesic domes, Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here are the formulas that you make your tubing, blah, blah, blah. And then you hit the, the wall of, and how do I cover it? And then that's where it gets complicated. So this is what I've come up with. Um, I invented or discovered these two domes. And you could also make these lines straight. And if you make these lines straight, you get this. Now, this is not gonna be as strong as this, of course, because triangles are stronger because if you got pressure on here from just the weight of the structure or with uh, snow or whatever, it's gonna, the, the pressure is gonna go like that and then go down these two, where here it's gonna go down only these and squares tend to do this they just tend to shift so you, you you're gonna have to have diagonals all around here now some things are easier because making a door here is a lot easier these are more suited for tents but the other good thing about having them straight is that you could put them together A lot easier. Look at that. But I really like these two. They're simple. 
all sides are the same. This one looks like a little house. They're elegant in my opinion. And uh, they are super cheap to build. So I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do. Hope this helps.